So how exactly to optimize the use of chemotherapy for the various metastatic subsets of patients truly is a practice-long, lifelong, multi-decade um, you know, practice, if you will. But I'll tell you where I've come down today. Uh, let's start with the triple negative patients. Um, there is a small group of triple negative patients that have very highly proliferative, so-called basal-like triple negative breast cancer. I always re-biopsy patients when they recur with metastatic disease. And there's a group of the triple negatives that have a phenotype of highly proliferative disease, really ERPR HER2 zero, and particularly those, and this is demonstrated in the Stephen Isakoff JCO paper from 2015, I think it is, um, these patients have metastasis of their triple negative to um, thoracic lymph node disease, parenchymal lung, uh, or um, in the breast. There's a very small percentage of triple negatives, about 10%, that will go into a multi-year complete response with cisplatin, a few patients with carbo, carbo AUC of six, cisplatin 75 milligrams per meter squared, will go into a CR, and at least by the time he finished publishing the paper, these patients were four or five years out, and they had not recurred. So I never want to miss that opportunity. It's very rare in triple negative breast cancer to get highly durable responses. So I always utilize that Isakoff paper for that, that phenotypic group of patients. Um, but other patients um, have more luminal sites of metastasis. They have, for example, bone disease or bone liver disease. And um, I'm not as certain that they will get initially at least of, uh, as strong benefit from a platinum-based regimen, either platinum alone or uh, gemcitabine carboplatin or exciting new data about um, NAB paclitaxel and carboplatin um, uh, presented by De Denise Yardley at, um, at San Antonio this past year. But um, a, a taxane is an, a very good place to start for a lot of these patients if it's been a number of years since they've had neoadjuvant or adjuvant taxane, for example. And I find very good uh, success with that if they have particularly liver bone type uh, metastasis. Some patients have a lot of tumor burden uh, and very, very symptomatic, you know, visceral crisis in the liver or uh, shortness of breath, difficulty uh, breathing with uh, just lung volume metastasis. They, they need combination chemotherapy, and this combination of NAB paclitaxel and carboplatin has been shown in this randomized phase two trial that Denise Yardley had uh, at San Antonio last year, that the NAB paclitaxel carbo was superior to NAB paclitaxel gemcitabine and to gemcitabine and carboplatin with regard to progression-free survival uh, and response rate. So, I think as a, as a doublet evidence-based doublet therapy, that's um, one of the few studies we have looking at the various doublets. So I think that's an excellent option for patients that really are in desperate need for an immediate um, deep cytoreduction. Cyto um, other agents in triple negative breast cancer include aribulin, because aribulin is a very non-cross resistant agent. It's one of the few agents, and this is really true, for all the three subtypes of breast cancer. It's not so much subtype specific because it's getting at this mesenchymal biology, this highly invasive biology that unfortunately all of these cancers develop by the time they're heavily pretreated because if the chemotherapy doesn't kill the cell, it wounds it. And then it, it, it goes from becoming proliferative to protecting itself. It's, it gets more metastatic and more invasive like to get out of there basically. And, um, our chemotherapy agents uh, don't tend to work as well. They're more proliferative, uh, not as much mesenchymal, and aribulin is uh, both. It's both anti-proliferative and it is uh, anti-mesenchymal. And so it's, it's an agent that I utilize quite a lot for any site of triple negative breast cancer in pretreated patients, particularly those who have had a prior taxane, for example, or prior, prior platinum. It's quite, quite non-cross resistant and anthracyclines, as most patients have had a, a prior anthracycline with triple negative breast cancer. So for estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, that is now endocrine therapy resistant. So generally, we try to have patients have multiple lines of endocrine therapy. Unfortunately, it comes a time where they really do need to go on to chemotherapy. And generally speaking, um, I utilize uh, capecitabine, single-agent capecitabine. 
um, because a lot of our uh, anti-estrogen uh, therapies, uh, CDK4-6 inhibitors, mTOR inhibitors are really aimed at the PI3 kinase pathway. You get outgrowth of proliferative breast cancer. Capecitabine can really be an excellent uh, therapy for those patients. Very well tolerated, can quite give durable responses. Most of us will go on to a taxing, next including myself, for, for those patients after capecitabine. And generally the third line agent is, is aribulin because again, because of the non-cross resistance, we don't have that many things that are that non-cross resistant and aribulin has shown a survival advantage in later line metastatic breast cancer because of this non-cross resistance. And then lastly, in HER2 positive disease, there are um, our series of treatments are a little bit more algorithmic because of the way the agents have been serially developed. So definitely the first line treatment for HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer is a taxane, docetaxel or, uh, or paclitaxel with trastuzumab and pertuzumab per the Cleopatra trial. That's clearly the first line treatment. Give about six to eight cycles of chemotherapy, stop the chemotherapy, continuing the anti-HER2 agents indefinitely until the time of progression. The um, NCCN and uh, guidelines then call for a TDM1 for second line treatment in HER2 positive disease, a very reasonable option. Uh, and also then uh, the lapatinib capecitabine combination is another one, or capecitabine with trastuzumab is also very, very well worked out. Um, so these are the sort of the main sequences we use uh, of chemotherapy in HER2 positive disease.